Hello and greetings, everyone. Good to be with all of you on this call. Welcome. I'm Alvin O'Neill Jackson, retired uh, pastor in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, 43 years of active ministry across the length and breadth of this land. I thought it was time to stop and rest for a while, but I received an early morning call from Bishop Barber about joining this work with the Poor People's Campaign and for the past year and a half or so, I flunked retirement. I'm not mad about it, but glad about it. Might even be grateful about it uh, to be engaged again in this work. And so this call today is a call about engagement. All of us being engaged, involved in the arena, actively engaged in the work of justice and fighting for our democracy. Here we are 22 days from one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime. That's not an understatement. That's not hyperbole. We can't sit this one out. Remaining on the sideline is not an option. I'm grateful for our faith team, Reverend Casimir Brown uh, and Dr. Adam Barnes, and Reverend Bob Stevens, our national political director, Fred Azicardi and all who've been involved, our team involved in arranging this call this morning. Some 1,500 people pre-registered for the call, and so many more will be joining us. This is about thousands reaching out to millions. And uh, I want to say to us that you will be able to view this call even after this call ends. So it will be on all of our social media platforms, and so you'll be able to share it with colleagues even after the call ends. We will hear today from the co-chairs of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, Bishop William J. Barber II, and the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, two of the most necessary moral leaders of our day. And following their talking to us and sharing with us, Reverend Casimir Brown and Dr. Adam Barnes will make an ask, a big ask of us, uh, and make some announcements, point to some resources on our website. Uh, and I want to say to us that we're going to do this all over again on Tuesday, October the 27th, same time, same station. We're going to do this again and bring us all back together again on on the 27th. So make a note of that, maybe even sign up for that. I think you can do that even online now, sign up for the next call. But before our co-chairs speak to us, I'd like to introduce two uh, national faith leaders who will open and close our time here today, two longtime friends of the movement, the Reverend Dr. Cynthia Lynette Hale, senior pastor 
of the Ray of Hope Christian Church in Decatur, Georgia, and Iman Omar Suleiman. Dr. Suleiman is founder of an institute for Isla Islamic studies and professor of Islamic studies at SMU in Dallas, Texas. Bishop Barbara, well, and, and, and I should say that uh, uh, Omar Suleiman is maybe running a little late. There's been a death in the family. So if he does not join us, uh, someone else will close us, but he's scheduled to be with us today. Bishop Barbara will speak following Dr. Hale. So Dr. Hale, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Jackson and all. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, women and men of conscience and concern for the well-being of all those you have created in your image and likeness, as well as the soul of our nation, have gathered on this call. We are clear that the stakes are high in this upcoming election. We need a change of leadership in order for us to not only survive, but become the nation that you destined us to be, where there is liberty and justice for all. God, we need men and women to be able to exercise their right to vote and vote their convictions, vote their values, vote as an act of resistance against the forces of evil that would try to suppress it. We need to vote as an act of love for our brothers and sisters who are living in poverty, living without employment and income, adequate housing, food, and health care. We have come to you because we know that we have much work to do to mobilize, organize, register, and educate voters. We can't do it without you. We need your wisdom to refute the naysayers who believe their vote won't make a difference. We need your courage and strength to stand firm in the face of any opposition that would try to intimidate and minimize our vote. We need your power, oh God, to make us fearless and unapologetic about the need for a revolution of values in our land. Give us the passion and persistence we need daily, O oh God, to work as if it all depends on us and to pray as if it all depends on you. Thank you, God, for the Reverend Alvin O'Neill Jackson, for Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, for Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II, who brought us together for such a time as this. We need one another. Together, we can do more. Together, we must do more. Together, we can be the change we are looking for. Together, we can bring about a complete transformation of our country for our good and your glory. It's in your strong and mighty name that we pray. Amen. 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 Bishop Bob. Bringing deep in my spirit for the last few days, has been this simple line from a song that was sung in the face of things worse than we are experiencing today. They would look at the dogs. They would look at the police. They would look at the, the, the loud voices coming from governor's mansions and even sometimes from the White House. And they would simply say, white and black, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around, turn me around, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, keep on a marching, walking up the freedom way. My brothers and sisters, we're gathered here today and I wanna just talk straight, straight, straight out of my heart. Amen. The Bible declares we are not of those who shrink back under destruction. But we are those who persevere unto the salvation of the soul. Our nation, our world soul is in trouble. And we've got to demythologize this notion that the extremists, that those promoting wicked and evil policies have the power. We have the power. We just need to unleash the power. If we unleash the power, we can change who is making the decisions in this country. The person who sits in the White House now is only there because they won the Electoral College, not the election. And they only won the Electoral College by 80,000 votes in three states. And in one of those states where Liz comes from, Wisconsin, 250,000 votes were suppressed and they only won by 30,000 votes. In Michigan, he won by 
10,000 votes, but 100,000 Black people in Detroit alone did not vote. In North Carolina, he won by 170,000 votes, lost all of the other races down ballot, and 170,000 votes was the margin of victory. 450,000 African Americans alone did not vote. 32% of the electorate did not vote. 920,000 poor and low wealth people did not vote. And he only won by 1,700 votes per county. My brothers and sisters, nationwide, 100 million people did not vote in the last election. 34 million of the 64 million poor and low wealth people that could have voted, these central workers that Trump and McConnell are hurting, did not vote. We have the power. We don't have to take this. And there comes a time, even in faith, that we must not simply ask God to fix it. We must see what God has given us to fix it. I hear crying out over the ages what God said to Moses when Moses wanted to cry because the people were looking back. Moses, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? God did not tell David to go out on the battlefield with Goliath and pray for Goliath to fall down. He said, take five rocks with you. You won't use but one, but keep four more for his cousins. But take one, five rocks with you and just throw it. That's just right. throw it. That's all I need you to do is just That's throw right. it. That's we don't have right. to text this. We've That's done a study, right. and Liz knows about it. We found that 15 in 15 states, all of the so-called battleground states, because you know when the media puts up uh, this percentage of people voted for this candidate, they're talking about the percentage of people that did vote. They're not talking about those that didn't vote. That's a different number. And that's the number we, people of faith, poor and low wealth people, have the power to reach in 15 states. All it takes is 1% to 19% of poor and low wealth people and their allies to vote that didn't vote last time. And, and just 1% to 19%, 1% in Michigan, 7% in Florida, 19% in North Carolina, just that small percentage would exceed the margin of victory that happened in 2016. You know, I'm talking about Michigan. I'm talking about Pennsylvania. I'm talking about Wisconsin, New Hampshire, Arizona, Minnesota, Maine, Florida, New Mexico, North Carolina, Nevada, Georgia, Texas, Mississippi, and Ohio. And if you push that to just 30%, you're talking about probably 30 states. That's right. We have to stop acting like they have all this power. We That's have right. so much power that has That's not right. been unleashed. So many stones that have That's not right. been thrown. So much in our hands that we That's have right. not yet stretched out. That's right. And the truth of the matter is, when we look at where we are, what we need now is faith that works. That's We've had right. enough faith that prays. We've had <laughs> enough faith that cries. We've had enough faith that mourns. We've had enough faith that says how wrong it is. We've had enough faith that says how evil it is. Okay, we got, we've done that. That's what right. we need now is faith that works. There's That's a song right. by Hoja that says, it's not the waking, it's the rising. And my friends, we must rise. Only the poor and low wealth and people of faith can save this democracy. Hear what I'm saying. You can That's talk right. about all the money. You can talk about all that, but money doesn't vote. Mm -hmm. Only poor and low wealth people and people That's of right. faith and conscience who rise up now, who say we will no longer stand back, can work on and change the direction of this democracy. It's not mm -hmm. enough to be woke. A lot of people are saying I'm woke, and that means I can see how bad it is. I see the police brutality. I see the, the lack of health care. But being woke and sin is not enough. You have to rise up out of bed and change it. Dr. King one time said, not only must we help the person on the, on, on, on the, Damas on the Jericho Road, you got to change the Jericho Road. Somebody right. got to work to change the Jericho Road. And That's we need right. people to vote early. We need you to vote by absentee. We stop believing these lies about it doesn't work in your states. If you've got early voting, vote. And if you're going to vote on election day, put on your personal protection equipment and vote. We have prayed and I'm, I've prayed and cried enough now. Mm -hmm. It's time to put mm -hmm. some work in. 
That it's is time right. to put some work in. It's time to do like Harriet Tubman said. I prayed enough in slavery. It's time to lead this. It's yes, time sir. to put this. This chapter has got to be put behind us. That yes, came sir. apart. Frederick Douglass said, I prayed enough about how bad the slave master is. There comes yes, a time sir. you have to put it behind you, especially yes, when God has given us the power. Mm. And why 7.7 million cases of COVID? Before COVID, 250,000 people dying a year from poverty. And now just in seven months, 214,000 people have died, Liz, from COVID. And they didn't have to die. And we're talking about projecting. We're talking about by February and now over 400,000 people died. This has got to stop. That's right. Only 500 people have died in South Korea. Only 500 people. This has got to stop. This didn't have to happen. This is not God calling people home. This is straight up policy negligence and policy murder by the Senate and the presidency. And it doesn't have to be. That's if right. folk won't change, we need to send them home to think about themselves. That's but right. They have abdicated all authority to hold political office. And I'm not That's talking right. partisan now. I'm talking in moral and Holy Ghost authority. The death numbers are crazy. And I'm through here. But we know millions could have been saved. We know 12 million people have lost employer health care. And 13 million people, low-income people, reported not having enough food to eat. 42 million people increased on SNAP. 30 million people facing eviction. And folk are more interested, as we're on this call today, in stealing and stacking a Supreme Court seat than caring for the people while they have free stuff. Every one of those people today in that Senate, they have free health care. They have the highest wages and the best pension. It is a damnable situation. That's Lord have mercy. We got to do more than just preach about it. We got to do right. more than just pray about it. God That's has given right. us this vote. $845 billion is how much the billionaires have made since March. Mm. Since March. Since March. Mm. And the mm. people that are blocking because they're in elected offices, they have the best of everything. And yet they refuse to give folks sick leave and unemployment and essential workers. All they said was, you will guarantee you testing, but we won't guarantee you treatment and free treatment. And right now they're trying to take even the Affordable Care Act. And my brothers and sisters, it only gets worse if we don't turn this around. My Hebrew brother and sister said, your vote is your voice. And, and the word Hebrew, call, is the word for voting voice, K-U-L. We got to turn this around. And I know somebody said, well, remember, Barbara, you're putting a lot on us. Yes, yes, because we are not of those who can shrink back unto destruction. Shaq mm -hmm. ain't the only one that needs to be repenting of not voting. Mm -hmm. Shaq is not the only one. NBA is right. not the only one. A lot of us need to repent. We have not in the past pushed our churches and our communities like we should have. We kind of took it for granted. We said, well, that this will never happen. Nobody will elect this kind of craziness. But it's here. That's right. We have a chance. If we vote, we can be a country that begins to eradicate systemic racism and denial of health care and poverty. We got work to do, y'all. We have work to do. And yes, yes, it's in our hands. Cynthia, there's a scripture in the Bible that we must make sure is not on our epitaph when we are dead and gone in this generation. And it is in the Psalms. And it's Psalm 78, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's, but it says, it says that Ephraim had everything they needed mm -hmm. to win the battle. But in the day of battle, they My chose Lord. not to fight. My Lord. That means that the, and Ephraim came from Joshua. Joshua was a fighter. We come from Joshua's and Joshua's. We don't come from people who stood down and stood back. We come from people who fought against stuff much worse than us. And this vote is our Edmunds Pettus Bridge. It is our moment. Mm -hmm. And that's our moment. And we must make sure right now. If 30, 40 years from now, when some of us are laying in our grave and our spirits are with God, that the generations will call our name and say, we stood up. Mm -hmm. We, my, voted, my, my, we my, spoke my. up mm -hmm. and we refused to accept what was going on. It's yeah. time, y'all. It's time. The matter is, it's past time. It's past I'm time. I'm glad I'm living right now in this time. 
to yeah. join them because yeah. I know, I know we're going to do it. Yeah. Do it on November and beyond November. Let's go Amen. to work. God Amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bishop Barber. Dr. Liz. <clears throat> well, thanks so much for joining us and allowing me to, to have some words to share and, and, and mostly thanks Reverend Barber for, for that, uh, for that charge, for that charge that we all must indeed heed. Amen. Archbishop Tutu said this powerful quote, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. Indeed, these are not neutral times, my mm -hmm. siblings in faith and in the struggle. That's right. These are not neutral times. These are not sit out times. These are dangerous times, difficult times, times when great change is possible and so very necessary. Times where what is going on in this election is answering the question, can these bones live? Can this democracy survive? Can the cry of those bruised and battered by poverty and racism, ecological devastation and militarism lead a revival of the most basic rights and values of our society? And in these times, when hundreds of thousands have died, when millions are on the brink of homelessness, when white supremacy is so alive and well, poor people, black people, native people, the earth is like the mouse, or in fact, many, many mice, and there's a huge elephant on our tail. Mm -hmm. We can't be neutral. Mm -hmm. We can't be silent. Instead, as people of faith, we are called to tirelessly work for what Moses set out, to not rob or murder, to honor and worship no one but God, to provide mm -hmm. for all that all may have enough, no one too much, no one too little. We are called to dedicate ourselves to what the prophets cried out for, for what Jesus gave his life for, and that was health care, and people bearing the fruits of their labor and care for the most vulnerable. That was about rights and dignity of all, and not that some were more important in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. Our sacred texts are clear that all people have a voice, that yeah. all people have dignity, and that society should be organized around the needs of those most impacted and oppressed because the least of these is really most of us. Right. Deuteronomy 16 tells us, appoint judges and elect officials in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall govern the people fairly. They should not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe or tamper with votes, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice, justice mm -hmm. alone, so that you may live abundantly in the land. This theme of abundant life is on the ballot this election. Who has the right to life to the fullest? Jesus starts his public ministry by declaring, I've been anointed by God to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to all who suffer. He proclaims, I have come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. He does not proclaim, I didn't make enough food for everyone to eat, nor that my abundance will trickle down from the rich to the rest. He does not suggest that anyone should profit off a pandemic, nor that he wants Peter to have to rob Paul to be able to pay bills. He does not say get a job to the homeless of their society, nor you shall not bear children to the refugee mothers of his community. He does not proclaim a little charity, but no just stimulus is as good as you can get, nor that the powerful should be exempt from taxes, but that the poor shall have to pay for the haircuts and the business escapades and the pleasures of the rich. He doesn't say that the private insurance companies can pay families of those bruised and battered by the legions of empire in order to leave the governing authorities unaccountable. And never once does he suggest to charge a leper a copay 
or cut people off from healthcare mm -hmm. in a crisis. So if our faith traditions and our sacred texts are clear, we are clear. We know we must mobilize and organize and register and educate people for a movement that votes. We must protect our votes and the polls. We must pledge to mobilize voters. We must remind the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the millions that we are to let our light shine by voting for candidates that stand for health care, that stand for education and living wages and union rights. We must vote for Jubilee and keep on pushing until it is the national practice. That's no, right. these are not neutral times. The times when we unite and organize and mobilize and unleash and enlarge and enliven an electorate that can change right. our entire political landscape. One yes. that can bring about a moral revolution of values, a radical redistribution of political and economic power. We have 22 days before us. And may we reach and inspire millions to push that large animal off our tails and off our backs. Yes. Both like our life depends on it because yes. it does. We yes. must excite and empower others to vote because somebody has been hurting our people. It's gone on for far too long and we won't be silent anymore. We will rise up and we will vote. Amen and amen. I don't know about all of you, but I'm charged up, fired up and ready to go. Yes, I am. Reverend Kaz and Dr. Adams speak to us for a few more minutes here. Charge. Send us out from here with a with a, with with something to do. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, Reverend Liz, Reverend Barber, and, and, and Reverend Hale. Um, I don't think I could have said it any anybody could have said it more clearly, the, the importance of this moment and, and really put out clearly what the ask is, which is uh, for us as a campaign, moral us as moral leaders, as um, as people with a conscience, use every ounce of energy we have and reach out to every contact in, in our networks and, and implore people to be out there voting, mobilizing people, organizing in this uh, absolutely critical moment. And as, as Reverend Barber and Reverend Liz have said, if we do, we can change things. We can unleash a different power and and resist, as, as Reverend Hale said, resist uh, the evils that have been unleashed in the society. So our asks are simple. Um, most of, many of you already are out and um, encouraging folks to vote. And so we ask that you encourage everyone to reach 10 more people and have them reach 10 more. So each one reach 10 is the, the catchphrase there. And we also have a whole month of activities planned to, to keep th this sustain, call uh, sustained and going, keep this prophetic call going. And uh, Reverend Casimir is going to help outline some of those more details, but we're here pulling folks together for this final push and, and invite and encourage everyone here to help us do the same. So, uh, Reverend Kazmir. Thank you, Dr. Barnes. That is right. We are at a time of this season and we are saying it's the more faithful month. So we're encouraging to get people to get involved in this more faithful month in two ways. The first way is by taking the prophetic pledge each reach 10. So we know we have the power to reach millions by just reaching out to 10. So we want to charge you to reach out to all the people you know and ask them, can you reach out to just 10 more people? Can you call 10 more people? Can you send 10 more postcards? And if you're, at, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I've reached out to everybody. Well, guess what? We have a phone and text banking that can get you set up so you can reach a lot more than 10. So we invite you to take this prophetic pledge, each reach 10 effort. The second way you can get involved is by lifting up a powerful prophetic message message. And what we are focusing on is what does it mean to do more as a person of faith? So we want to hear from you, whether that's sending in a, a short 30 to 60 second service or teaching within your congregations or faith communities. We want you to lift up a prophetic message. And you can do this by going to vote.poorpeoplescampaign.org and clicking on the button more 
faithful month. We want you to get involved and we want you to stay involved so you can reach to the prophetic pledge and lifting a prophetic message. Not only that, we have other ways for you to get involved in this more faithful month. And that is by joining us online on November 1st for our powerful national call to prayer and action at the Rankin Memorial Chapel at Howard University. In addition, we are also hosting a powerful prayer and action starting on October 27th all the way through election day. So there is many a ways for you to be a part of this more faithful month. And we wanna hear from you and we wanna keep this charge going because we have the power. We have the power to make to reach out to millions and to change the social and political landscape of this country. So join us by going to vote.poorpeoplescampaign.org, more faithful month. And now I would like to pass it off to Imam Omar Suleiman, who is the president of the Akeen Institute for Islamic Research and professor of Islamic studies at Southern Methodist University for our closing prayer. Thank you. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, peace be with you all. I think uh, while we um, may not all agree on everything, but we certainly know that when the country is hurting, those that have always been hurting hurt more. And that the vicious cycle of poverty has only showed uh, further how vicious, vicious it is with this pandemic that we're living in right now, with our essential workers, with those who have been struggling in so many different ways. And there's a quote from Al-Hajj Malika Shabazz, Malcolm X, who said that when you live in a poor neighborhood, you're living in an area where you have poor schools. And when you have poor schools, you have poor teachers. And when you have poor teachers, you get a poor education. When you get a poor education, you can only work in a poor paying job. And then that poor paying job enables you to live again in a poor neighborhood. And so the vicious cycle continues. And we must stand opposed to policies that continue that vicious cycle. In Dallas right now, and I know I've been invited to pray, uh, but but forgive me, I'd, I'd like to share this. Right. We have an action right now downtown to remove Shingle Mountain in Dallas, which is a mountain of garbage, literally a mountain of garbage that has resided in a singular place in Dallas, which sends a message to a significant population in Dallas that we do not care about you. And as people of faith, we have to push back with our prayers and our actions to say that we do indeed care about you, that we do care about those that are struggling and that we will struggle with them until they struggle no more. In the chapter of Abraham in the Quran, Moses, peace be upon him, is quoted in the seventh verse as saying, remember when your God proclaimed that if you are grateful, I will surely increase you. And so my prayer today is for gratitude. Our God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We thank you for your many blessings upon us. For if we were attempt, for if we were to attempt to count those blessings from just one of your blessings upon us, we would be unable to do so. We pray that you expand our hearts to include others, our minds to think for them, our success to uplift them. We pray that you grant us prosperity, yet use us to alleviate others in their times of adversity. We pray for empathy the ability to understand and hear people in pain and to be near to trauma that otherwise is distant from us. Let us be people who suffer not from the poverty of the inner soul and ignore not the poverty of the world around us. Let us be uplifters. Let us be uniters. Let us be people who build bridges, not walls. Let us be people who preach and practice love and mercy, not hate and division. Place people in our path that will cause us to grow and whom we can help grow. Allow us to be people of people of ease and people who remove hardship from the world around us rather than those that cause injury to the world around us, either through actively participating in harming the world around us or ignoring it when we can do something about it. We pray that you use us for good that you forgive us for our shortcomings, that you guide us and you guide our people to work for those who should not be neglected 
and to bring about a more harmonious and a more beloved society that reflects the mercy with which you created us. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Imam Suleiman, Dr. Hale, all of you joining us today. Blessings. Thank you. Go in peace. <clears throat> Thank you.